Okay, what's up everyone? Um, if like me, you are about to plan your next fishing trip, which I'm currently doing at the moment, which is gonna be in a few days time, just wanna to talk to you about a few things which you should be considering uh, with regards to sea surface temperatures, um, altimetry, currents and tides. Now I'm not gonna go into massive detail here, just go into a little bit of detail and tell you the main tips that I think will help you out. So you've probably all heard of the saying that 5% uh, of anglers catch 95% of the fish and um, I really do believe that that is true. Um, and it's not basically by fluke. Sure, you have some people that just spend a lot of hours on the water and they're just trolling around, driving around, hours and hours of baits in the water and they do catch fish. That's fine. If you're like me and you have to travel to go fishing, uh, I don't really have the luxury of spending a lot of time on the water, so I need to use every tool and piece of information that I can to maximize my catch rates when I'm on the water, which um, doesn't often happen, and, and it just so turns out that I'm part of a, a game fishing club, and I've got to say I'm probably the worst member of the club. So hey, if you're still interested in watching, watch on now that you know that. So I want to talk to you guys, like I said, about sea surface temperatures primarily and altimetry, and I'll touch on a few other things. Now, there's a few services out here you can use. Um, two major ones that I've used before are called Rip Charts and Fish Track. Now, you can check out their websites and you'll be able to see some information for free. I'm just gonna to be totally honest with you. The free information is a very limited value. Um, it's a little bit, I guess, not not current, um, the updates aren't that often, and it's the level of detail isn't kind of what you need, but it's enough to give you a taste of what things are basically all about. Uh, both of those services now offer apps on your phone as well, so that is really, really helpful when you're going away fishing. Okay, what I'm gonna show you is uh, rip charts here on my computer, so I'm currently subscribed to rip charts. And um, I've got it up on the screen, I'll go through it in a second. I'm actually using the mobile version on my desktop computer just to make it a little bit easier to read for you guys. All right, so if we come over here. So here we go. Logged into Rip Charts at the moment. And what I've done here is basically a search of all the sea surface temperature charts that have been generated in the last um, 48 hours. Now the ones here with all this um, gray, as you can see, that's effectively cloud cover. So these ones with lots of gray are not really gonna be very helpful to me, but I'll keep scrolling down and what they actually offers, offer is a composite view. So that is a few different images that are basically molded together to give you a better view. So if I keep going down, I'll find one. Okay, here we go, here's one here. So that image is current as of the 13th of October, which is actually yesterday. So that's pretty current. I'm gonna have a look at that one. So we just click on that. Now, this is basically the region I have subscribed for. So it is, um, New South Wales, effectively. Now I'm just gonna scroll in to roughly where I'm gonna be fishing. So very, very quickly, um, just the basics. Uh, blue indicates cold water. Green is the water is getting slightly warmer. And then yellow through to red will um, indicate the very warmest water. So lots of really warm water up around here at the moment. Now that's not where I live or will be going fishing. So I'll have a look at where I will be fishing in a minute, but just a, a few basics. So if you're fishing off primarily for off offshore species like I do, so species like tuna, yellowfin tuna, bluefin tuna, they love temperature breaks. So wherever there's a temperature break where the warmer water basically um, crosses over with the cold water, that's a really good spot to focus your fishing. 
Now, of course, there are other factors like um, the actual water temperature itself. So all um, pelagic species prefer different water temperatures. Now, I know there's a lot of threads and information online about this and there's kind of blanket rules and things like that, but I'm not sure they always apply. They kind of depend on a bit of local knowledge as well. So I could give you a general statement like, oh, yellowfin tuna, uh, might only be found in 19 or 20 degrees Celsius water or above. And it wouldn't actually be a factual statement. It might be like a guideline, probably not even accurate, but it really depends on where you actually live and how the fish behave and operate in your local area. So in my local area off the South Coast, sometimes the yellowfin will turn up in 18 degrees or even 17 degrees. So it just kind of depends but it's definitely important to look for those um, temperature breaks. Now, there's a few different things to think of here. So you ought to think of, well, cool. You've, sh you you've showed me basically, you know, a temperature break out in the middle of the ocean here, and that's not actually anywhere near where I'm gonna be fishing. And we can measure things, so if you go up here, and you select tools and go distance, I can tell you roughly from the mainland how far away that piece of water is. So that is 47 nautical miles offshore. And if I was a betting man, I would say this would be a really good area to get out and have a crack at a yellowfin tuna. Um, 46, 47 miles, it's a long way offshore. You may or may not have the boat or the weather window or anything like that to get out there. Now, what you can do is you can add um, overlay, uh, different layers. So we can add uh, bathymetry on here, which is basically just a fancy word for showing you where the underwater contours are overlaid on the map. So along here is basically the edge of the continental shelf. So the close, these lines indicate um, basically a gradient on the sea floor. And the closer the lines are together, the steeper that gradient or drop off is. So basically this area here, these lines which are very close together, that's effectively the, the continental shelf. So dropping off down there. So by enabling that um, view, you can basically see where the good looking water is with respect to other, um, you know, distinguishing features along the sea floor. So anyway, look, first and foremost, look for good water, okay? Good water temperature and temperature breaks. Really, really important stuff. Now, I'm going fishing around this area here on the weekend, and if I look at that water, um, looking at the temperature here, 16.8 degrees, uh, pretty cold, no interesting temperature breaks there or anything on the screen. So I actually don't really think it's worth my while heading offshore and having a crack at a tuna or anything like that. I think I'll probably end up at this stage just heading around and, and fishing along the inshore reefs along here for basically a crack at a snapper or something like that. Now, if we go back and look at the, the better quality water, a few more things to consider. Well, firstly, I'll just wrap up on the temperature thing. So why does the temperature actually matter for pelagic fish? So the pelagic fish um, have preferred temperatures that they basically swim in for their body so they can travel and um, maintain the right temperature in their body and regulate their water temp their temperature. But they also follow the bait and the bait themselves have preferred water temperatures. So it's a basically the cycle of life. The bait will be in a certain temperature, um, the predatory fish will be in a certain temperature. Now there's a lot more that goes into it. Um, you've basically got, like I said, the edge of the continental shelf along here, and that continental shelf with the East Australian current running along here is basically like a highway. It's like a super highway for predators and bait fish to travel up and down the coast, in particularly the east coast of Australia. So rarely you will find um, pelagic species like tuna 
come inside of the continental shelf towards the mainland. In most cases, the tuna are now caught directly out past the continental shelf, okay? And they can be, you know, they, there are um, certain features under the, the sea that will concentrate the bait and make upwellings of water like underwater sea mountains and things like that. So tuna generally out over the shelf in Australia. Marlin, however, seem to, in marlin season, seem to really concentrate right along the edge of this continental shelf and sometimes even inside the shelf. And they're just consistently there every single year, every single summertime. So uh, it's not just about the water temperature. You wanna be in the right place for the fish. Okay, now another thing I wanna show you guys is something called altimetry. Now, what this basically is, um, just going to take that off to sim simplify this image a little bit. Now, what you can do, as you probably are seeing here, is you can overlay multiple views at once on the screen. Now, I'm just going to remove some overlays at the moment. Sorry, just bear with me a second. Okay, wait, I, th I think, sorry, I think I can show this better in the actual altimetry view. So if I go back to the main screen here, I do a search for altimetry, and here we are. This will explain it better. Now, altimetry. To dumb it right down, what this basically means is, refers to is upwellings in the ocean and downwellings in the ocean. So, before we look at the image, um, when I say upwellings, I mean quite literally the ocean is spiraling and welling up and, and the, the level is rising and everything in the water column is basically going from the bottom up. Now, why is that important? So, Quite simply, um, bait, plankton, fish, etc., all are getting brought from the bottom to the top of the ocean because of that upwelling. So what that means is at the top of the ocean, in the top of the water column, there's plenty of bait, plenty of food, more likely to have uh, predatory fish there, pelagic fish species there, okay? So you basically want to be targeting upwellings um, in the water. So even better than that, is the basically the changeover point between an upwelling and a downwelling. So it kind of creates a bit of a wall, if you could imagine, in the water column of just, you know, bait, activity, nutrients, all that sort of stuff in the water. So upwelling is good. In between an upwelling and a downwelling is even better. Now, downwellings, if you think about the opposite, Think about things where the water's kind of spiraling down. What do you think that does to all of that bait, all of that plankton, etc.? It goes to the ocean floor. So the pelagic species that primarily live on the surface of the ocean, the ocean surface, they're not going to go down to the ocean floor, you know, three kilometers down to chase that food. They go, stuff this, I'm going over there where the foods are, you know, easy pickings on the surface. So they actually refer to downwelling areas as like dead areas in the sea or even ocean deserts because there's basically nothing there, there's no life. And this really does make a difference when you're an offshore fisherman and you're trying to work out where do I go today to try and catch a tuna or catch a marlin. So sea surface temperature important, underwater structure important for sea mounts, upwellings, current important, but altimetry is also really, really important. So let's have a look at what that looks like now on the screen. So the blue areas here basically represent upwellings. So uh, that's, they're the kind of areas you wanna be targeting and the red area represents a downwelling. So if you just think red, red for bad, blue for good. Now in this middle, this area right in the middle of the two here, that is actually your prime fishing area. Now, if that is too far to get to, because it's right out in the middle of the ocean, then I would still be looking at the edge along here of that actual upwelling, rather than fishing, say, 
down here where there's there's basically a downwelling. So you want to be fishing in the upwellings or on the edges of the upwellings and that is just really simply because that is where all the nutrients and the good stuff that the predatory fish like to eat is welling up from you know from the the bottom up to the top of the ocean so sounds crazy but it is that simple the ocean spiraling up brings all the good stuff up to the surface with it all right so we've spoken about temperature we've spoken about altimetry we've spoken about um, some of the locations so in australia the tuna are generally out over the continental shelf and the marlin seem to sit right along that continental shelf and that's because it's that it's that highway for current basically and um, so the other thing to talk about the last sort of thing so if you if you can try and pull those factors together the best you can the last thing to consider is basically tides. So a lot of people think that tides are only applicable in estuary systems and that's quite simply not true. So <clears throat> what you want to, so tides equal current, equal movement in the water, fish can move around freely, they can feed, they can do whatever they need to do, they can travel. When tide, when there's a change of tide and the tide goes slack, you've got a good period of about an hour, close to two hours where there's not much movement in the water. Now, what actually happens in that, era, in that time period when the water goes slack, the bait fish don't actually have much current or anything to swim around and evade predators, etc. So what they do is they effectively go into a protection mode. And if you go offshore, this is when you're most likely to see things like bait balls. So Tide goes slack, it's a lot harder for the fish to move around and escape the predators. So what they do is they actually pack themselves together tightly to increase their um, chance of not being eaten just by being in a big um, ball of fish, strengthening numbers and also to appear big, I guess. Um, they pack in tight balls and it often allows the predatory fish to start and, and dolphins and sharks to start, if you can imagine if this is a bait ball, um, the fish will start attacking them from the bottom until the point that the bait ball is all the way up to the surface of the water. Now, two things happen there. Birds start hitting the bait ball from the top, okay? And then the fish keep them pushed up towards the surface at the bottom. So if you're out looking to catch a tuna or a marlin, you really want to maximize your catch by focusing your fishing time around the changes in tide. So yep, all the stuff I've spoken about, temperature, position, currents, altimetry, all important, great. Um, also, change of tide is really important. You want to bring all those factors together and be in the right fishing spot at the right time. And the right time is an hour or so before the change of tide and then an hour or two after the change of tides. So that's going to be your absolute maximized way of catching the fish you need to catch. Um, yeah, so look, the, I probably covered a lot there and there's a lot more to learn about those topics. That's just the absolute basics. And if you go onto the Rip Charts website, they do have some fantastic uh, tutorials and they probably do explain all of that stuff I've spoken about a hell of a lot better than I just did. But I just want to highlight to you that the people that go out, the best anglers that go out and catch the most fish offshore are not just going out there and fluking it and guessing and driving around and, and trolling for days and hours and just suddenly getting lucky. There's a lot more that goes into it. And if you're truly uh, serious about offshore and game fishing, you should get yourself a subscription with one of these services and start to learn how it all works. And I'm sure you will see your catch rates hopefully improve. Okay, hope you guys found that helpful and um, that's precisely what I'm doing at the moment. I'm, I'm calculating these sort of factors about my weekend fishing trip coming up and hopefully I can do all right and I might see you guys out of the water soon. See ya.